City of Santa Barbara. Today's uh, meeting is March 25th, 2008. It's 1 o'clock. I'm Roger Horton, the chair of the committee. Council Member Falcone is here and Council Member Schneider. Uh, the uh, topic for today's meeting is the February 2008 investment report. And Mr. Pearson is the finance director for the City of Santa Barbara and I've asked him to lead us through a brief explanation of the report. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Again, Bob Pearson, City Finance Director. And as you said, Mr. Chair, the item before us today is the monthly investment report uh, that we bring to the Finance Committee and City Council each and every month. And in this case, it's the investment report for the month of February 2008. And normally, as you know, uh, members of the committee, for the non-quarter end months, we normally don't have a formal presentation, but Given the fact that this is the first time we're on television with this item, I thought we would back up and give uh, a little bit of background and then also a quick look at the portfolio, which, as I said, would not be what we would normally do for non-quarter-end ones. But um, as you know, the city's uh, investments are governed by both state law and uh, a city council adopted investment policy. Um, essentially, the city's investments are limited to um, fixed income securities, that is bonds, and um, really all we can buy are top rated corporate bonds and government backed bonds. <clears throat> and so that is the bulk of our portfolio. And um, we've got uh, a slide up on the screen that you're looking at <clears throat> that shows um, the, will give some idea of an overview of the portfolio. It, it presents um, two different tables in the same format, one at the top which is as of the end of January 2008, and then the ending balance as of February 2008, which is the month actually we're currently looking at. Um, maybe you could slide that up a little, Jill. We'll look at the February one. There we go. As you can see, um, we have um, presented our, our portfolio in about, what, five or six categories. Um, the first of those is the State of California's Local Agency Investment Fund, which, as you know, is the overnight money market fund run by the state treasurer's office that is open to all local government agencies and we make uh, heavy use of that. Um, we had uh, at the end of February we had about 43, well not about, we had 43 million dollars um, in the state of California's LAFE or local agency investment fund. We had two million dollars in a local bank certificate of deposit. We had treasury securities totaling some 3.9 almost four million dollars and then, as you know, the bulk of the um, city's portfolio is in federal agency issues, about $90.5 million, roughly. And then we do have a smaller amount of uh, uh, corporate notes, corporate bonds, um, in this case, about $19.2 million. And when you add all of those up, you come up with a total investment portfolio of about $158.5 million. And then you add to that our... Um, money market account at uh, Santa Barbara Bank and Trust, which, as you know, is the city's uh, bank, um, of about $1.9 million. So as of February 29th, 2008, the city had about $160.4 million in cash and investments. Taken as a whole, those investments were yielding about 4.8% um, uh, at, at the as of the end of February. And then on the next column over, you can see the, what percent of the portfolio each of those categories of investments is. And then the final column is the average days to maturity. And you notice that LAFE is shown as a one-day uh, average day to maturity, and that's because it is, of course, a money market fund, and we have the ability to call them up by 10 a.m. on any given business day and have the money in our checking account wired down by them to us that same day. If you... Uh Notice the average days to maturity of the February report, 519 at the bottom there. Yes. And then you compare that to the January at 479. Could you comment on the difference there? Certainly. Um, of course, with LAFE, uh, in all cases, it's one day. Um, you can see that the um, certificate of deposit, actually, since it is a discrete one CD, um, it's a month uh, actually closer to maturity. Um, and then the uh, Treasury Securities 396 to 425, that actually, uh, the, the days to maturity went down there too because in those we did not buy any new ones. And so as they get closer to maturity, the, um, that number goes down. The big jump was really in the uh, federal agency securities 
because uh, that was where we were active in the market in February, buying things which um, which lengthened the average term to maturity for that category, and that affected the overall days to maturity for for the portfolio. In fact, it was <clears throat> excuse me the only real category that that lengthened, and yet it was enough to move the entire average days to maturity for the. Um, for the entire portfolio, and if, if we might, um, I would. I think that's probably a pretty good segue. That if we look at the next page of the report, which is actually page one in your books, um, it shows our investment activity for the month of February, and it shows that um, br broken down into purchases or deposits on the top, and then sales, maturities, calls, or withdrawals um, at the bottom half, and you can see that. Of the purchases, they really fall into two categories. One is a purchase of of investments of of government bonds. The other is deposits to the state's local agency investment fund, our overnight money market fund. And so you see that, for instance, on February one, we bought a, fe a federal farm credit bank for two million dollars, and then on uh, later in the month, on February thirteenth, we bought a federal home loan bank for two million dollars. And those two are really only two purchases during the month of February. The rest of the activity in that section were deposits to LAFE. And then again, on the sales maturities calls or withdrawals, you see that the bulk of the transactions are actually LAFE withdrawals from either the city or the redevelopment agency account. But we did have on 214, we had one federal home loan bank bond called. And then we had a maturity uh, near the end of the month, a Fannie Mae uh, two million dollar maturity on on uh, February 25th. So, in all in told, we had 12 million dollars of purchases and deposits, and about and 17 and a half million dollars of sales maturities calls and withdrawals. And then on the right hand side of that, you'll see our interest revenue for the month. And we discussed this last month, and that is that um, we do accrue interest revenue regardless of when it's paid. It's basically an estimate, um, but we are pretty good at making those estimates, and it, of course it gets really a lot of attention right at the end of the fiscal year when we're going to have auditors looking at the numbers. During the fiscal year, it's more of just an, uh, an effort to try to normalize the, the recognition of our investment income revenue. Um, at the end of the year, it's important because the auditors will want to make sure we've done those calculations correctly. But you can see that for the month, um, of uh, February, we basically earned about, as a city, citywide, $587,000 of investment income. Um, and then the RDA earned about 76000 on their LAFE account. Um, and that's the part we talked about. LAFE really only pays us interest quarterly, but we can calculate it based on the numbers we get from LAFE as to an estimate, very close estimate of what that month's interest will be. So we book it. Um, Okay, that's a good explanation. Uh, so now let's um, move to the report itself and uh, see if anyone has any questions on pages three through five. I would just, I guess I would add, if you don't mind, that, that um, next month will be February or March quarter end and, and we will have a as as is the our, our practice, um, a more complete report for you at the end of each calendar quarter, as you know we do, and that that next one will be one of those. It'll be for the quarter ended March. Ms. Falconi, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, could you also, mostly for the public, give a uh, uh, give us the dates that the actual budget hearings are going to uh, begin, or at least the first, maybe one or two, because. Uh, that really is when we discuss the entire budget and uh, people, hopefully public comment will come in and uh, we'll get input from folks as to how they feel about certain things. But uh, when, when at least are the first two? Actually, uh, uh, Chair Horton, um, Committee Member Falcone, we have the schedule right here, which I was not foresighted enough to bring, but somebody was. Um, and uh, the first one will be... Um, um, we will file a budget on Tuesday, April 15th, and during an evening session um, on that day, we will make a presentation, an overview of the budget and, and our budget balancing strategy and what was done. Um, and then Monday, April 26th, from 3 to 6 p.m., will be our first public hearing. I don't know if the 15th is going to be noticed as a public hearing. That's the filing date. I, I don't think we're going to necessarily notice that as a public hearing. Do you know, Jill? Okay. 
Yes. Well, I, yeah. As a council session, of course, people will have the opportunity to speak on the item regardless. Um, but Monday, April 28th from 3 to 6 p.m., um, we will start with the departmental budget reviews and public hearings. So um, in a nutshell, Tuesday, April 15th, uh, evening session, 6 o'clock start. Monday, April 28th from 3 to 6. And the next one after that will be uh, three weeks later or two weeks later, Wednesday, May 7th from 1 to 5 p.m. And we have a total of about six hearings for various different categorical discussions. And then at the end of that will be the budget submittal, I assume, to council. Uh, I'm not quite sure if that's a technical word. I guess my point is that there are uh, half a dozen or more opportunities for the public to weigh in on various different sections of the budget. And this goes on now for the next six or eight weeks uh, that, that's that correct actually well correct? it's it's yes um, the uh, we, we have one two three five scheduled okay. in terms of departmental presentations mm -hmm. and each of those will be a public hearing mm -hmm. and they start as I said um, Tuesday April 15th and the last of those five will be on Wednesday May 14th an evening mm -hmm. session from 6 to 8 p.m. Great. I just wanted to give the public sort of a, a road map to, mm -hmm. to our budget process and, uh, right. and the duration uh, of its, of its and, discussion. Yeah, and then I would point out that even after the last sort of presentation on Wednesday, May 14th, that's still about five weeks before we ask the council to adopt the budget, and that will really begin beyond that, the, the council's deliberations, discussions. Right. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Mr. Well, and just to follow up. Usually the Finance Committee also goes into more detail sometimes on s specific aspects, and we haven't determined that yet whether this committee will be doing, except for making it, if there are any things like the kitchen sink after all the public hearings if the Finance Committee needs to bring recommendations back. So that's a separate meeting in addition to all the ones that you've just mentioned. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct, uh, Councilmember Schneider. We actually will be to the Finance Committee on that same April 15th date to lay out for the committee the items that we would like to bring to you as part of the budget review. And there won't be any surprise. There are the standard ones. We want you to look at the, um, the multi-year forecast for the general fund, updated revenue estimates, um, reviewing the, the budget balancing strategy, and those kinds of things. Right. So the bigger, as opposed to one department at a time, which is the public hearing piece, which is important, obviously. But then if like in the past, the Finance Committee's looked at a program that might be multidisciplinary, so then see how that works. And that that's happened a year ago with all the different changes to parking tickets related to then giving parks and recreation funding for certain programs. And so that's a great opportunity for people to get involved as well. That is absolutely right. Okay. okay are there any uh, questions or comments uh, concerning the investment portfolio? If not, um, I think I'll it's move it to the consent calendar. Okay, is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. That concludes um, the meeting for today, and uh, we'll be meeting back here again in one week or two weeks? One, one week. One week, sir. Great.